Welcome to Take Two, the talk show where we take two actors and get two takes on the real lives of working performers. I'm your host, Jeff Savage. Every story has a beginning, and when you think about any great adventure tale, the stage is often set by the hero taking brave steps into a larger world. In the world of acting, every journey is unique, and there is no one-size-fits-all approach to when that adventure begins. It's inspiring to know that we can find that spark at any time, and by pursuing that desire, we can open ourselves to discovering new horizons and learning remarkable things about ourselves. Today, I'm going to introduce you to Ashley Nicole Dennis and Charles George, two dynamic actors whose adventures put their dreams in the spotlight and open the doors to exciting new opportunities. It's a pleasure to have them both on set with me today, and I look forward to bringing you our conversation. I'm excited. Are you ready? Ashley, Charles, welcome to Take Two. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for having me. Here. It's great to have you. Thank you for being our guest today. Awesome. You know, this uh, show is all about the adventures in acting. And, you know, we all get our start somewhere. Uh, I want to ask you both, uh, what inspired you to pursue a career in acting? And use this opportunity to actually introduce yourself to our audience here today. Ashley, I'm going to start with you. Awesome. Well, my name is Ashley Nicole Dennis, and I actually started by default um, in acting um, in undergrad. Um, I was a mass communications major, broadcasting journalism specifically, as I started. Um, and then I figured out real quick, I don't like hauling equipment. So <laughs> I switched my major to, or my minor rather, to uh, print journalism. Little did I know I was actually going to be cross-trained in broadcasting. So that kind of introduced me to the world of acting. And then I actually got a chance to participate in a student-directed one-act play um, in undergrad. It was called um, Outtakes of Reality. It was actually an original piece written by the director's younger brother who was in high school at the time. Um, and I played a main character by the name of Joanne. Um, of course, life, as they say, was life. And um, I actually had my son my junior year of college. Um, and so my shift focused, or my focus rather shifted to um, being a mom and a full-time student. I graduated in uh, May of 2006 when my son was about two and a half um, and went right into working, uh, being a full-time working mom uh, and doing all the things that working moms do. Um, I got an opportunity to go back to school in 2011 where I earned my master's degree. Um, and then once my son kind of matriculated through the um, elementary, junior high, high school process, I'm now a, a semi-empty nester as I consider mm -hmm. myself. Um, and I started looking at the fact that I had all this free time on my hands now. And what do I do with it? I'm, I'm not carpooling. I'm not running to and from football games. What do I do with all of this time on my hands? And I said, you know, now's a good time to go back to what I originally started, which was acting and exploring um, what that world looks like for me. So that's been my focus over the last few years now. Well, fantastic. Fantastic. Well, thank you for, thank you for sharing that uh, with us and, and our audience. Charles, same question to you. You know, we all start somewhere. Right. Uh, right. To tell, uh, talk to, uh, introduce yourself to our, to our guests at home here, but also, you know, what inspired you to pursue a career in acting? All right. So my name is Charles George and my journey is a little different. So I've always loved acting, loved to be in skits, plays, but I didn't act upon it until two years ago. So here's my story. Ever since I was younger, I loved to act, loved to be in skits, plays, what have you. And I love mimicking people, just trying to find my way in any acting gig or job that I could be in. Now, when I say acting gig or job, I'm talking about a skit, school play, church thing. But as I got older, I had to make a decision. What am I going to study to try and make a living? Now, you got to understand, my context is... You know, I, I was brought up in an Asian Indian uh, culture. So uh, what you had to study was something prestigious, either be a doctor, engineer, or computer programmer. I took the computer programmer route. So I studied that thinking that I was going to be a programmer for the rest of my life. And I started doing various programming jobs, development. And then I wanted to take it a step further by getting my MBA. So I got my MBA started working in the industry, started doing various things in IT. But then I got to a point where I was like, you know what? I want to try and move into leadership roles, I'm trying to climb the ladder, so to speak. And 
you know, I studied, prepared myself for this opportunity. But to make a long story short, my my desire or I would say my opportunities just came flat. And I was I was really, really depressed, disappointed. And I came to a point in my life saying, OK, what do I do now? Um, I wouldn't say it's a midlife crisis, so to speak, but I was like, you know, I prepared so hard for this. This is something that I really wanted to do, but it hasn't worked out. And I started thinking, you know, what am I going to do? Am I going to change my career? Do I need to look at something else? And then it hit me about a few years ago, two years ago, uh, in fact, and I said, why not acting? Because for me, acting, whether it's in commercials, in plays, or even a television show or movie, it brings out such a freedom, a creative juice in me that I like to express to people like, you know, what we're doing now or even those uh, watching. And I said, you know what, let me just take this big leap of faith and let me pursue it. So I started taking online classes, Mm -hmm. uh, commercial acting um, from Terry Berland out in California. Did that, started learning about the industry, what to do, what not to do, camera setup, background setup. Then after I finished that course, I realized that, hey, I needed to be represented by an agency. So I started applying to agencies in-state, out-of-state. And thankfully, Court Talent, founded by Teresa Natera, took a chance on me. And I was so thankful she got me up to speed, um, showed me the ins and outs of what to do, what not to do. It's important. Yeah, and, it, and it's, it's been a big help uh, for me in my journey. And then I started doing all these things, started preparing for myself, started, you know, getting my studio, my setup, everything, all that right. And I was fortunate enough to get a background gig one month after I applied. And I can tell you, I was so excited, even though it's background. Yeah, background's a, a, a crucial part of any production. Yeah, it's, it's like a first step. And, you know, I still remember... It was on a weekend on a Sunday, and I couldn't go to sleep the night before. I ended up getting up in the middle of the night, driving all the way to Waco to do a Northern Tools commercial. Um, And it was shown, of course, in the Northeast. But it was at that point that I started realizing, hey, this is something that I can do. And ever since then, I've been in, you know, various backgrounds and various commercials. I was able to get an opportunity to be a main principal for a lawyer commercial for a firm out in San Antonio. Been in a few TV shows and movies here and there, but it's been such a great journey. And it's something that I really want to continue. And that's where I that's why I am today and that's why I'm sitting here talking to you guys. Well that's fantastic. That's a it's it's a great journey and it's a testament to how the acting journey doesn't always have to start early on in life. It can be something where you pick it up later at, you know, pursuing a passion from childhood or even from an earlier part of your life. Um, Ashley, I want to kind of, you know, segue from that answer to talking about how the acting journey can actually spawn off other um, ideas and, and, and ventures. And I know when I, when I first talked, started talking to you, you mentioned that you uh, participate in a in a podcast, and I love the opportunity for you to tell our audience about um, how that came to be and and what the podcast is all about. Absolutely. So the podcast is actually a brainchild of a very very good friend of mine, um, a high school friend of mine, Je- Jennifer Porter Kennard, um, also known as NPK, to um, her audience. Um, but it spawned from a play that she actually wrote. Jennifer is also a very seasoned actor, comedian um, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And so she wrote a stage play by the name of A Big Girl's Guide to Love. Um, It was uh, actually entered into a contest and uh, selected by the Mansfield Theater. Um, She actually wanted me to perform as one of the leads. um, And I just could not meet the rehearsal times because of my work schedule. So um, instead, I cheered her on from afar Um, And then later she started the podcast and she said, you know, I think you would be a really good guest. And I said, sure. (laughs) Okay. Um, But it also gave me the opportunity when I started my acting journey to kind of pick her brain, so to speak. Um, So in addition to hosting the podcast, which we do uh, every other week, uh, you can find it on Spotify, Apple Music, anywhere you get your podcast streaming service. 
um, it gave us an opportunity to talk more about acting in and of itself. I actually asked her when I started my acting journey, would you be my unofficial mentor? She's like, I don't know anything. I was like, you know more than you know, trust me. Um, and so she's been uh, my guiding force behind uh, the scenes. She's been, in addition to my agent, um, I'm also represented by Core Talent, uh, Teresa Natera. Uh, Jennifer has been my, my second go-to. Oh, that's fantastic. How the acting journey can you know lead to these other ways to express your love of acting by you know providing a resource and a and an educational podcast to right. you know those around uh, you know who want want to also follow in those footsteps too. You know, um, Charles, you know, getting your feet wet in the acting world. You know, what's the most surprising aspect of working in the acting industry? For me, it's all the work that gets put into you know whether it's a commercial a movie um you know i remember when i did that uh, that uh, background gig for northern tools the amount of work that went in to put a 30 second commercial you know i would think you know before i got into this business well I'll be worst case in an hour no it took at least eight hours mm. there were so many angle, so many perspectives uh, to consider, so many retakes and redos. Um, director wanted to change this or, hey, they had to pivot and go in this direction. I mean, it's amazing. The amount of work, the relationships, um, the personalities that you run to, it, it's all surprising. And there are some parallels with some of the work that I've done, you know, in the corporate world, but it's, it's like amazing. All this stuff goes into you know, commercial acting, yeah. TV acting, movie acting, whatever it is in this show business. It's it's just it just blows my mind. And of course, you really gotta be on your game when you're doing this. Yeah. You know, you you're you know, you're delivering a finished product that an audience will see. So all these things really have to line up and be perfect. And to me, that's just so amazing. It's not just the actor, it's the entire production team behind it that works behind the scenes to everybody works together to, to make that happen. But, uh, you know, at this time, we're going to take a quick break. As we do here on Take Two, we love to highlight a fun segment. We'll be come back. We're going to treat our uh, guest to a uh, put him in the hot seat for a fun little game uh -huh. called Oscar or not. I ain't You're care. going to want to miss it. <laughs> Boy, be right back. Here we go. If you are not marketing with video, you can bet your competitors are. 86% of businesses now use video as a marketing tool. Need help with your video marketing strategy or content? Learn more at SyncLabMedia.com. Hi, I'm Jeff Savage, marathon runner and author of the number one Amazon bestseller, Savage Resilience, Conquer Adversity and Be Your Own Hero. In this powerful book, you'll discover correlations between what it takes to finish a marathon and what it takes to be successful in any long range goal you may have. Order your copy of Savage Resilience today on Amazon or by visiting jeffsavageonline.com. The audio book is also available on Audible and the iTunes store on Apple devices. I'm Jeff Savage, and I encourage you to conquer adversity and be your own hero. Welcome back to Take Two. I'm your host, Jeff Savage. In this fun segment, we are going to put our guests, Ashley and Nicole Dennis and Charles George in the hot seat for a fun game we like to call Oscar or Not. Oh. Uh, this game is designed to uh, test the actor's knowledge uh, of their industry and their peers. And as you know, the Academy Awards are the upper echelon of you know, an actor's accolades, as we, uh, as we may say. Uh, I'm going to ask you some rapid-fire questions, and uh, I'm going to give you some celebrity names. You're going to tell me if they won an Academy Award or not. So it. It'll be a fun, a fun way to kind of test your knowledge of, uh, you know, who has achieved that pinnacle of success. Bring it. Um, Charles, I'm going to start with you in this case. All uh, right. And we're going to just jump right in here. Go easy on me, all right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Christian Bale. Won an Academy Award. Okay, great. Sigourney Weaver. Won an Academy Award. No. Oh. Ian McKellen. No. Okay, no is right. Natalie Portman. No. And 
she did. She did win. She won for Black Swan. Oh, that's dumb. All right, uh, Samuel L. Jackson. No, indeed. You, you're pretty good at this. You, you missed, you missed a couple, but uh, you, you know the peer group pretty well. You can't go perfect in the season, but <laughs> I had a winning record. <laughs> indeed, indeed. All right, Ashley, it's your turn. I'm gonna gonna ask you some uh, some, some questions. You know, see who who you know as being the uh, the winners of Academy Awards. I can be your lifeline. Just oh, I, I I I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, we're well, gonna start with Glenn Close. Yes. No. No. Okay. She should have. Jennifer Hudson. Yes. Okay. Dream Girls, indeed. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. I want to say no, but I'm thinking yes. It is yes. You just won for Oppenheimer. Annette Benning. Yes. Uh, this is surprising. No, indeed. Oh, yeah. yes. so, Jamie Foxx. Yes. Ray, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, Stanley Tucci. Stanley Tucci. Yes. It's a no. 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 He's a very talented actor, but Bruh, do so. But he yeah. did very well also. Uh the Academy Awards, you know, they recognized the the best actor in uh in that year. But you know, obviously there's a lot of great talent, which, you know, kind of leads me to talk about just talent in general. Mm. As an actor, you know, you both are exploring acting, you know, coming into it um, in more on the later side of uh, of the journey here. Mm -hmm. But what is it? Um, that you think makes a performance truly captivating? I'm going to go with you, Ashton. You know, I think the um, more you are able to connect emotionally with your audience, that is really what engages um, people into holding someone to a, an esteem as being a, a quote-unquote great actor. You know, I was recently reading uh, something online about um, Ethan Hawke giving props to Denzel Washington um, and uh, just an amazing range that he has. He is an, an extremely seasoned actor in his craft, um, translating from both the stage as well as the big screen. So I, I think the, the biggest thing that works in his favor is the fact that he, it, he embodies every character um, that he uh, portrays. The same goes for so many other actors uh, and actresses. Um, Angela Bassett, one of my personal favorites. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that I have not been able to see her in, whether it be old school stuff on television to something as big as Black Panther, uh, Tina Turner and What's Love Got to Do With It, um, as uh, Betty Shabbat in uh, Malcolm X. Uh, Y'all start alongside with Denzel Washington on, but um, they have this innate ability to really connect emotionally with their character and their audience, and I that translates well for them. Absolutely. And that's another great example of somebody who hasn't won an Academy Award, though is very deserving. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, Charles, you know, thinking about when you watch a movie, when you uh, think about being an actor yourself, you know, what do you think makes a performance truly captivating? I heard an acting coach say, you got to be moved by the actor's or actress's performance. Mm -hmm. You had just mentioned Denzel Washington, and one of the things that comes to my mind is his performance in Malcolm X. Yes. You know, I I still remember his saying, um, uh, and I forgot the exact scene, but I remember saying, we didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. And to me, he's, I mean, you can't say enough about Denzel, but every character that, He's embodied, you know. Um, he always puts so much into it, you know. And for me, I am such a huge fan of movies that, you know, depict real people because I appreciate whether it's an actor or actress when they study the person's life, what they represented, their mannerisms, their behaviors, and they put that onto the screen. To me, that captivates me. It moves me, you know. It's like, wow, and get I get it. I know this is a movie and there are some things that are not real, but overall, it's just that the way, a way I get moved, especially when it comes to a biographical movie is just, you know, their behavior. They are, they are literally to me, that person portraying themselves on the screen for an audience to pay attention to, to get moved by. Um, and to me, that just speaks so much, that speaks so loudly to me. 
it it moves it yeah. captivates me yeah, emotional resonance uh, is indeed very captivating and is uh, you know the sign of a, a true actor they say you know it, the best advice to give an actor is to act natural you know yeah. a lot of times the best actors are the ones who don't even look like the actor. exactly and, so. and it and it's a testament also to to how much work the actor themselves puts into learning their character is creating world for their character Um, because once they have taken the time to study that character um what they may have uh you know if it's a fictional character you're you really have carte blanche as an actor or actress um to create whatever you want that character to be and in that really delving into the emotional side of what that character uh would um portray themselves as, how they would carry themselves, um, what they would have for dinner, uh, how they would speak to their children, how they would do small mannerisms, whether it be like fiddling with a pen or, you know, just little things speak volume. Sure, sure. It all it all adds complexity and layers to the uh, character. You know, I would also say, uh, sorry to interrupt, but um, a movie I just saw recently on Netflix, Hacksaw Ridge. Okay, Andrew Garfield, absolutely portraying um, a medic who was a uh, real life story of he held on to his faith so strong, didn't want to fight in the war, but serve in the war by practicing, you know, medicine, helping those that are injured on the field. Uh, sorry, not on the field, but you know, in the area of war. And it's amazing how much work he put into it because. He really portrayed the character, really holding on to his beliefs, his faith, while still uh, engaging in the war, but not necessarily shooting a gun or hurting people, but in essence, helping people. And to me, going back to your earlier question about captivating, that really moved me because I never seen a movie like that where they portray someone who's not really fighting in a war movie but doing their job and helping people to make an impact in the war. Absolutely. You know, the heroes are sometimes the ones that are behind the lines, you know, as often in a production, the heroes are those on the production team uh, working behind the scenes. So in that regards, in this, uh, you know, I want to, you know, kind of bring this uh, bring this plane in for a landing here. I want you to uh, be able to talk to our audience and let them know how they can find out more about Ashley Nicole Dennis and Charles George. Ashley, um, is there a uh, play? The, the plug your uh, podcast one more time. Let our guests know how they can find you and uh, any other ways that you want to promote uh, yourself and how to find you uh, on online. Sure thing. So I can be found on Facebook with my full name, Ashley Nicole Dennis. Um, I can also be found on LinkedIn, same, Ashley Nicole Dennis. You can also find me on A Big Girl's Guide, the podcast, which again is on uh platforming streaming uh services such as um, apple music uh spotify anywhere you get your platform streaming uh done we also have a youtube channel by the same name a big girl's guide the podcast um i am also on um instagram you can find me as ashley nicole dennis as well so i'm all over social media (laughs) fantastic well represented well represented Charles George, uh, let our audience know a little bit about, uh, you know, what's coming up with you. Uh, uh, any way, any way, way you want to promote yourself, uh, where can guests find out a little bit more about Charles George? Yeah, I'm represented by Core Talent, and you can find me at coretalent.biz. I am represented by Teresa Natera. So um, if you need to reach me, you can go to that website and contact me there. If you have any opportunities for commercials or TV work or movie work, I'd love to be a part of it, show you what I can do. Well, fantastic. Now, at this time, uh, I, I'd i love to let our guests talk to the audience. I'm going to give you each 30 seconds, and I want you to look directly into their uh, into the audience. Okay. And I want, to, I want you to give them one piece of advice. Someone out there right now is just starting their acting journey. What's one piece of advice you're going to give to somebody who needs to hear it right now? Gotcha. Perhaps the best piece of advice that I can give someone is just showing up. I have an amazing mentor by the name of Dr. Renee Fowler Hornbuckle who uh, says part of your success is just showing up. Showing up in spaces, whether it be networking, showing up for uh, different gigs, um, if you're extended the opportunity to do so, just show up and be your best self. Um, No one can be you but you. And so if it were me, um, because I've been in that boat before, so I can say that honestly. 
um, show up and show out as only you can do that. Um, your gifts um, will definitely make room for you. I have been in spaces where people have literally just came and took me by the hand and say, you look like someone we need to see. Um, and I have gotten the most amazing opportunities um, just by being in the room. So if there's anything I can relay, it would be just show up. That's beautiful. I, I, I love that advice. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Charles, uh, same to you. Uh, someone out there is uh, you know, just starting their acting journey. What's that one piece of advice you'll give them to uh, help them along? I would say give it everything you've got and don't give up. I can tell you, and many actors can tell you, you will run into disappointments in this industry. It's just the nature of the beast, and it'll happen. However, learn from those experiences and keep, keep going. Refine yourself. Study, study, study. When you get an opportunity to try out for something, give it everything you've got. I can tell you there are examples when I get an opportunity and audition for a commercial. I'm reading the script and I'm in the car while I'm also trying to pick up my child. And I can tell you there are times where I'm reading script, practicing, like, hey, buy this dog food, yada, yada, yada. And there are people looking at me from cars right next door saying, what's this guy doing? Like, oh my God. But don't be afraid of that. If this is something you like to do and you love it, pursue it. Don't be afraid of the criticism. Don't be afraid to fail, but just keep moving forward. Absolutely. You know, I got to say, I love both of yours passion and just your enthusiasm for acting. Uh, the adventures in acting is no two journeys are alike. And as you both have uh, you know, talked about today, you both come at this from different, uh, different perspectives and different, uh, different starting points. Uh, but here we've converged today on take two. And I want to thank you both for being our guests today, Ashley Nicole Dennis and Charles George. And to you. I'm Jeff Savage. You can find out more about me by visiting my website, jeffsavageonline.com. You can find take two on social media on LinkedIn and on Instagram. And subscribe to our YouTube channel at Sync Lab Media Studio. You'll find all episodes of take two streaming there. And at Sync Lab Media Network. Thank you for being our uh, audience today, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye bye. Bye. That was really, really good, you guys. Uh, seriously, you guys' as answers are awesome. You know, if you're just like early on in your journey, like, you get some really good feedback. It's a really, really good uh, observation.